Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Stishon, and once again, I'm bringing you another one of the scariest, creepiest, and most skin-crawling tales of terror that the Golden Age of Radio had to offer. For this episode, we feature a series that started out as a crime series about Detective Stonewall Scott, but was reprogrammed in 1947 as a horror series specializing in the psychological and supernatural with its weekly host, Peter Lorre, Mystery in the Air. Today, the cast of Joy Murray, Madeline Dower, and myself reincarnate The Interruption, which originally aired on July 24th, 1947. So turn off the lights, gather round, and if you get scared, just remember, these tales scared your grandpappy first, and enjoy the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. Good evening, sir. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I know you'd rather be alone so soon after the funeral. No, Hannah. Come in, please. I brought you this photograph, sir. A picture of Ms. Maud. Millie and me come upon it today when we were straightening out her things. I thought you'd like to have it, sir, to remind you. That's very kind of you, Hannah. We'll keep it here on the piano, shall we? It's quite a good likeness of your wife, sir. Till she was taken ill, I mean. I never in all my days saw anyone change so sudden. The nature of her disease. Yes, a terrible way to go. Just terrible. <clears throat> Was there anything else you wanted? You know, sir, I just can't believe she's dead. Every now and then I get a queer feeling that she's still here. Come right into the kitchen, behind me, just standing there looking at me, and wanting to tell me something. It's your nerves, Hannah. Perhaps you ought to have a little holiday. Those last few weeks have been a great strain on you. You too, sir. Waiting on her hand and foot the way you did. I don't know how you stood it. If you'd only had a nurse, sir. I prefer to do it myself, Hannah. A nurse might have alarmed her. Yes, I know. Of course. Is that what the doctor said, sir? I don't believe we discussed it. She couldn't have had a better doctor. N no man could have done more for her. And nobody could have done more for her than you, sir. There's not many husbands would have done what you did. Or done it so well. Hannah, please! I'm sure your intentions are good. But at the moment, I would rather not discuss it. Sure, I'm sorry, sir. Forgive me for running on like this. Good night, sir. Say, by the way, Hannah, I, I was going through some of Miss Goddard's effects this morning. Do you know if she ever locked up any of her things? What things, sir? Well, her jewelry, mostly. I couldn't find one piece. Why, didn't you know, sir? She gave all her jewelry to me. Gave it to you? When? Why, just before she died, sir. Of gastroenteritis. Why? Why would she do that, Hannah? I don't rightly know. But I imagine she couldn't bear the thought of another woman wearing all those lovely things. Another wife, I mean. Of course, I know you'd never marry again, sir. You couldn't, not after... Well, not after the way you took care of Mrs. Goddard. Why, sir, you're so pale. What's the matter? Nothing is the matter. I just don't feel well. Hello? Uh, I don't think she's in or she would have answered this herself. Yes, I'll tell her. What, now I have to answer the phone too? Hannah! Where are you? Right here, sir. In the library. In the library, huh? <laughs> Did you hear the phone ring? Yes, sir. Look here, Hannah. I, I don't understand you. What has come over you lately? You've been acting strange. Strange, sir. Yes, strange. I realize that without a lady in the house, you lack instruction. But this sort of thing you've been doing, sitting around here in the library in my chair, reading my paper. Do you realize I haven't even seen that paper yet myself? There's nothing much in it, sir. Look here, Hannah. I've been patient, and after all, I really haven't been myself since... Since the funeral? Yes. 
But frankly, I don't like your attitude. I'm sorry you don't, sir. Stop that! Don't you... don't you touch that piano! Oh, very well. I'll not have anyone touch that instrument! I think it's the only memory of my dear wife! Come, Mr. Goddard. Let's not change the subject. You wanted to talk to me about other matters, didn't you? Yes. Where is Millie? I haven't seen her about lately. Millie? Oh, didn't I tell you? I had to let her go. Uh, Without asking me? Why? She wasn't satisfactory. Not to my way of thinking. It was either her or me, Mr. Goddard, and I thought I knew what your choice would be. Yes, I... I should be sorry to lose you, Hannah. Thank you, sir. I'm sure I've tried my best. I've been with you some time now, and I know all your little ways. That's always an advantage, sir. Yes, of course. Now, what was it you wanted? Why, I... it seems to have slipped my mind. Oh. Now, if you have a minute, sir, there's a little something I wanted to see you about. Yes? My wages, sir. I'd like a little raise, seeing as how with Millie gone I'll be doing all the work now. That only seems fair. Let me see. You're getting 150 now. Suppose we make it 175. Isn't that satisfactory? Well, I was thinking of, say, 300, sir. Hannah, isn't that a rather big jump? Well, I figured I was worth it. To you, sir. After all, a big jump is better than, well, better than a big drop. (laughs) You're very gay tonight, aren't you? Short life and a merry one, I always say, sir. Well, if... if I give you 300, that ought to make your life quite merry. Merry and long, perhaps. I'm careful, you know, sir. Very careful. Careful what I eat and drink, I mean. That is very wise. And I'm wise in other ways, too. Like that letter I left with my sister last week. What letter? A letter to be opened after my death. And what would such a letter say? Oh, it's very short. Just that if I should die, I'm to be carefully examined by the coroner. And then I suggest that something else be examined. A poor soul laid away three weeks ago come Wednesday. How did you know? That you'd poisoned your wife. Well, to tell the truth, I wasn't sure at first. It was you, yourself, who told me. I? When? When you let me keep her jewels. I see. There... there seems to be someone at the back door. The delivery boy from town, I imagine. I took the liberty of ordering some more of that old brandy. It's all gone, and I do enjoy a little nip occasionally. You've no objection, Mr. Goddard. Did you hear? It's the door. Well? All right, never mind, I'll answer it. You! What are you doing here? So you're going around on tiptoe now. I didn't hear you. This room was locked. I had a key. What are you doing in there? I'm using the room for myself. I'm not scared of you. I'm not. Not with my letter. You're brighter than I thought. But I'm sure no one will have reason to open that letter for 50 years to come. I don't take up my troubles before they come. You ought to live to be 90 years old if you're fortunate. You're not fooling me. I know you'd like to kill me. One can't always do what one wants. Well, now you're completely the boss. Would you mind if I keep at least my own room? Well, now that you're looking at everything reasonable-like, sure, go ahead. You can keep your room. Mope in it as long as you like. (laughs) Oh, you laugh. Well, laugh while you can, Hannah. What do you mean? You're sitting pretty. You think riding high, huh? But you'd better be careful. You may not always have the advantage in this little game. I'll be thinking, Hannah, thinking at night when you're asleep. Thinking while you're parading yourself in my wife's finery and playing the great lady. I'll be thinking, Hannah, and planning, and sooner or later, I'll find a way. Yes, I think I'll find a way.
When you called me, I didn't expect to find you in bed. Now, when did you first notice these stomach pains? Oh, uh, around the time Maud died. Uh Uh-huh. Doctor, you've known me long enough. I'm not paranoid, but lying here and having these symptoms. Well, this really is puzzling, Goddard. You better go to the hospital tomorrow morning for a complete checkup. Good lord, what is that? My housekeeper, Hannah. She enjoys certain privileges, you see. Certainly an unusual servant. Come, Goddard, I've known you way too long to bid around the bush this way. What are you driving at? Doctor, my food. It has a funny taste lately. Everything I eat, even the medicine you gave me. Doctor, I know it's not imagination or nerves. I'm almost afraid to say it, but... I believe she... I believe that she's trying to poison me. Poison you? Yes, and now. I'm sure, Doctor. I believe that my wife was poisoned, too. Mr. Goddard, this is incredible. I know, but look on the shelf in the bathroom. There is some of the medicine you gave me. Please take it and have it examined, and then we'll know. Very well, but don't you say anything about this to anyone. Oh, no, of course not. I'm leaving you another bottle of the pink medicine. I'll put it on the shelf in your bathroom and take the other with me. She'll not know the difference. If you feel badly tonight, you call me. Don't worry if it's late. I'll come right over. In the meantime, we'll see about all of this. I'll take the bottle over to the lab first thing in the morning. Now you just try to rest. Try to forget the whole thing. Thank you. Uh, I'll try. Hannah! 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 What's the matter with you screaming like that in the dead of night? You and the storm are enough to scare a person out of their wits. Oh, Hannah, I'm sick. Very sick. You weren't so sick this afternoon. Please get the doctor. Please go and bring him quickly. Bring him? And what's the telephone for, I want to know? Oh, I tried it. Uh, the lines must be down. Hannah, please, don't let me suffer. Get him. Get him. On a night like this, I'd catch my death. I may be dying. What would I be worth to you dead? Nothing. Go. I, Please, get the doctor. Oh, all right. I'll go over and get my brother-in-law to drive me. But I think it's all a lot of nonsense and you could wait till morning. I can't. No, no, I, I can't. All right, all right, I'm going. She's taking her own time about it, but the doctor may have been out. Well, I'm ready for them. There's enough poison in a new bottle of medicine to kill a horse. When he has that new bottle analyzed, then we'll both demand an autopsy on my wife. (laughs) Poor Hannah. I feel sorry for her now. What's that? My nerves certainly are shot. They say you develop a tolerance for this poison in the system. But I only took enough to show up in the examination. Oh, awful tasting stuff. It's a wonder my wife never caught on. Poor soul. Who's there? Somebody in her room. Something in Maud's room. It couldn't be. I, I don't believe in superstition or, or ghosts or noises. Who's there? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not. No. No. Let me alone. Let me alone. My nerves. That's all. It it couldn't have been anything but the wind. Oh, I'm cold. I've got to get in and change before... before they come. Locked. I'm locked out. I'm locked out!
Oh, it's a fine thing you're dragging me out on a night like this. Look, Hannah, look there on the ground. Oh, it's him. It's Mr. Goddard. What's he doing out lying there in the snow? All this in one night. First the doctor is killed at the grade crossing and now him. Help me get him upstairs, quick. Sure, come on. You better go now. I'll take care of him. A fine mess this is. I'll get him some of the medicine the doctor left this afternoon. All right. I'll see you in the morning. If he's bad, you'll have to take him to get a new doctor. What with poor Dr. Phillips being killed and all. Here. Here, take this. Open your mouth now. Here. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That will fix you up. My, you're nothing but trouble. What's the matter? What have you given me? Where did you get that bottle? Oh, you've killed me. What are you talking about? You've killed me. That's poison. That bottle was full of poison. Poison? Yes. I've fixed you, Hannah. I'm dying. But you're going to die, too. And the doctor knows. He has the other bottle, and there's poison in that, too. You tried to fix me. The rope's around your neck now. The rope's around your neck. You fool. You fool, you fool, you've cheated me. Cheated me out of the days and the years of watching you squirm and suffer. You deserve to suffer and now you've cheated me. Oh, you fool. Don't you know the doctor is dead? (laughs) The doctor is dead. Oh, you fool. Oh, I could have made his life so miserable. And that concludes our reincarnation of The Interruption from Mystery in the Air and another episode of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. I'd like to thank my cast for helping me bring the script back to life. New episodes of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast are released every Thursday and can be found on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook so you never miss an announcement. And don't forget to leave us a review. Tell us what you think. Hopefully we raised a hair or two. But for now, that's it for me, Dave Stishin, and the rest of us at the Reincarnated Radio Podcast, where we scared your grandpappy first. (laughs) 